Good morning, everyone. My name is Suman Jung from Hanyang University, Korea. It's a great pleasure to present our work at the Eugenics ATC. Today, I'm going to talk about IO stack optimization for smartphones. This is a joint work with Kisong, Songjin, Seungbom, and Professor Yujip Wan. This is the outline of my presentation. I'll describe analysis of the Android IO stack and optimizations of the IO stack, evaluations, and demo. Smart devices, including smartphones and tablets, have already become a mainstream computing device, and they are rapidly replacing PCs. For example, the proportion that mobile devices take in the whole internet traffic is constantly increasing. For China, the use of mobile internet has, uh, for China, as of 2000, 2012, the use of mobile internet has surpassed that of desktop. According to a recent study, the performance of applications in the smart devices are not determined by airings or CPU, but rather by the speed of storage. The purpose of our study is to maximize the I.O. performance of Android-based smartphones. And for this purpose, we mainly focused on, focused on understanding I.O. behavior of Android platform and optimizing each layer of I.O. stack and making them to be more efficiently integrated. To understand the I.O. characteristics of Android device, we will first take a look at the architecture of Android platform. It consists of applications, application framework, libraries, Android runtime, and Linux kernel. Among various components of Android structure, we call the part that concerns about persistent data management as I.O. stack. We classify the I.O. stack as DVMS, file system, block device driver, and then flash storage. Current Android device uses SQLite as its DVMS, and EXE4 as its file system. And also, Android platform uses interrupt driven I.O. with CFQ I.O. scheduling. Lastly, EMMC is used as internal storage, and SD card is used as external storage. We first <coughs> conducted an experiment on analyzing the actual, uh, analyzing the I.O. characteristics of actual Android applications. This is to understand, the, understand how, the actual, uh, how the I.O. devices actually behave. Uh, the uh, experiment in this study used Galaxy S3 with ICS Android version. And we picked Twitter and Facebook, which are highly popular smartphone applications. Now, let's look at the result. First, regarding file types, we found that SQLite database and SQLite journal file account for 90% of total write request. Next is on block types. We classified uh, logical blocks in the file system level into three, data and metadata and file system journal. We found that metadata and ext4 journal blocks account for 40% of total write request. And out of total write request, Synchronous writes are 70% and buffered writes are only 30%. Next, locality of IOs. From the result, we can see that 80% of total write request is random write. Next is distribution of IO size. IO request that is equal to or smaller than 4 kilobytes is 64%. Lastly, this is the distribution of interrupt requests that occurred when the two applications were in action. Interrupt request to handle eMMC takes 18%. Then, why do these things happen in smartphones? We tried to find the answer for this by analyzing the in interaction between SQLite and ext4. Now, let's see how SQLite handles insert operation. When application insert a record to a database, firstly, SQLite create a journal file for this. And then, SQLite record, uh, record data to a journal and puts the commit mark. 
after the data is saved to journal file, and actual data record is saved to database. Lastly, SQLite deletes the used journal file. To guarantee the reliability of each operation, SQLite calls AppSync in each step. And ext4 also uses journaling to guarantee data reliability. In ordered mode, ext4 first writes data to the storage and then commits the corresponding metadata to a journal. Next, this is a block IO sequence when SQLite and ext4 works together. Every time SQLite calls AppSync, ext4 writes corresponding data and journal to the storage. Eventually, ext4 file stem journals both the SQLite database and SQLite journal file. In summary, a single SQLite operation, uh, AppSync, <coughs> AppSync calls two times, resulting in nine block IOs to the storage. We regard this phenomenon as not only excessive, but also abnormal. SQLite maintains DB journal, this is okay. And ex maintains file system journal, this is also okay. But when they are combined, ex journals SQLite journal file, which we do not expect. We call this duplication op duplicated operation of SQLite and ex4 as journaling of journal. Now, let's have a brief overview of ideas on how to improve the inefficient operation of SQLite and ex4. First, we compare the performance of various SQLite journaling mode to see which is the most suitable for smartphones. Next, by replacing SQLite F sync with F data sync, we try to minimize the metadata flushes. Then we try to find alternative file systems for ext4. Next, <clears throat> instead of inter interrupt driven IO, we develop a polling based IO and apply it to Android platform. Lastly, we saved file system journal in a separate storage and compared the performance with previous methods. Now let's look into more detail what I have shown you. Here I explain about experiment on comparing SQLite journaling mode. First SQLite journaling mode is delete mode. As you can see from the name delete mode, it uses journal file and glitch it every time. First, SQLite create a .db journal file and write it and call the app sync. And then, ext4 performs journal IO for this for three times. Next, SQLite write an actual .db file and calls app sync. And then, again, ext4 journal IO for this occurs twice. Eventually, a single insert operation in delete mode. Two app syncs are called and total of nine write operations are performed. Next journal mode is truncate mode. This mode is default mode of Android ICS version. The, trunc the operation of truncate mode is similar to delete mode, but instead of unlinking journal file after transaction, it truncates the journal file to zero length. This truncate mode has two app sync calls and total of eight write operations. Next mode is persist mode. This mode uses more aggressive approach than truncate mode to reduce journaling overhead. When transaction is over, the Instead of truncating journal file, persist mode writes zero to the journal header, and this existing journal block is used again when inserting a new record. This method can reduce the amount of updated metadata 
But additional F-sync is called for these zero field blocks. Persist mode has three F-sync calls and total of 12 write, write operations, which is the most among all journal modes. Last journal mode is write ahead logging. This wall mode logs a record to a .db wall file and calls F-sync. Since only one F-sync is called, this wall mode creates the least number of write operation among all journaling modes. To summarize, out of four journaling modes, wall mode shows the least, least number of F-sync calls and IOs. Also, wall mode has smallest num total IO volume. So we can see that wall mode is the best mode. Next is on alternative file systems for EXT4. As we have seen from journaling behavior of SQLite and EXT4, this write followed by AppSync workload is the most frequent IO pattern that occurs in Android platform. So we compared each file system for this workload. We traced the block IO for four kilobyte write followed by AppSync workload. In EXT4 file system, one data I.O. and two additional journal I.O.s occur. In this case, journaling overhead becomes 200%. Next, BTRFS uses copy on write and B plus three to maintain data structure. But these two methods lower the performance in Android greatly. For one data, for one write operation, BTRFS creates five additional I.O.s. Next, NILFS2 is a log structured file system and the segment size is 128 kilobytes. Since this NILFS2 write large size segment per one F-sync, it is very inefficient if system uses F-sync frequently. XFS is uh, originally a journaling file system for enterprise storage. It shows very efficient structure during AppSync call. This is because XFS generates one additional I.O. during AppSync call, and this, the size is only one kilobyte, which is smaller than EXT4. Last is F2FS. It's a file system that was announced less than a year. As you can see from the name, F2FS is known as a log structured file system that is friendly to fresh storage. From the block trace result, you can see that FTFS generates one additional I.O. with small size. Out of all file systems so far, we can see that XFS and FTFS shows the most efficient I.O. pattern uh, for the write followed by F-Sync operation. Next, F-Sync versus F-DataSync. AppSync pushes both the data and metadata to the storage. AppSync pushes every changes in metadata, such as size, M time, or A time. Meanwhile, AppSync and AppDataSync are almost the same except one thing. AppDataSync pushes metadata only when the size has been changed. So if we use AppSync instead of AppDataSync, we can largely decrease the amount of metadata purchase. Next, external journaling. This is the IO trace for four kilobyte random write followed by F-Sync in the EXT4 file system. Upper range shows data IO, while lower range shows journal IO. Data IO is random. On the, on the other hand, journal IO is sequential. But together, they get mixed up and become random I.O. Then what would be happen if we separate these two? XFS and EXT4 offers a feature that enables us to change where journal block is saved. Also, recent EMMC standards support a physical partitioning of internal storage. Thus, we can physically separate the I.O. of data and journal and this eventually leads FTR to exploit the locality of 
the I/O stream. <웃음> Next, <웃음> interrupt-driven I/O versus polling-based I/O. Recent smartphones have uh, octa-core CPU, and their storage latency is getting smaller. These changes can create a suitable environment to apply polling-based I/O. In block device driver of Android platform, MMCQD handles I/O request uh, for eMMC or LC card. This MMCQD uses interrupt-driven method to process I/O. But in a condition where many small IOs transfer, transfer to block layer, this interrupt-driven method can have performance drops due to excessive context switches. So we modify this MMCQD to process IO in a polling method. And we expected the performance increase by reducing context switching overhead. This graph shows the number of contact switches made by MMCQD for interrupt and polling method. We observed that the number of total contact switches is reduced to one PPS by using polling method. Here is experiment result. Experiment in this study used Galaxy S3, which has 1.4 GHz quad core CPU, 2 GB RAM, and 32 GB eMMC. And we used 16 GB micro SD card as external storage. IO performance, of, IO performance is very sensitive to, to journaling mode of underlying DBMS. So we compared the SQLite's four journaling modes on five file systems. As you can see from the result of SQLite insert operation, wall mode shows the best performance on all file systems. In EXT4, wall mode shows 116% of, of higher performance compared to truncate mode. And EX, uh, F2FS shows 281% performance increase compared to baseline of EXT4. Especially in update operation, the performance of wall mode was three times higher than that of other journal mode. This, the reason for the high performance of wall mode is this mode merely appends a log to a, a wall file and calls only one app sync. Next, let's see the result of result when we used F data sync instead of F sync of SQLite. We compared performance on five file systems to see the effect of app data sync. In EXT4 file system, it shows 17% of performance increase compared to baseline. App to FS, it showed 126% performance increase compared to baseline of EXT4. In update operation, the advantage of app data sync was bigger than that of insert operation. F2FS shows 250% of performance increase compared to baseline of EXT4. Next, we compare the effect of external journaling on EXT4 and XFS file system. For this experiment, we separately save data in external SD card and journal in internal eMMC. Both for SQLite insert and update operation, it showed 20 to 39 percent of performance increase compared to baseline. This table shows the result, where, uh, result of comparison between interrupt and polling method. The workload is 4 kilobyte random write followed by F sync. We divide the experiment condition into idle and video recording condition, and this idle condition shows slice slight performance increase. But the video recording condition showed 13% of performance increase compared to baseline. And then we tried to verify the optimization effect in a real workload. 
For this, we, with MobiGen, we captured and replayed the system call of Twitter and Facebook. This replay result was similar with previous SQLite experiment. Lastly, we applied all optimization techniques. In ext 4 file system, applying polling, external journaling, app data sync, and using world mode showed 134% of performance increase compared to baseline. When file system was changed to XFS or F2FS, the performance increase was even bigger. F2FS showed 300% performance increase compared to baseline. Finally, we achieved 300% of performance increase with all optimization techniques. So far, we, examine, we have examined the Android I.O. stack and Android I.O. characteristics caused by SQLite and ext 4 And we found that journaling of journal is the most critical problem in current Android I.O. stack. And we optimized this I.O. stack with wall mode, app to fs app data sync, external journaling, and polling-based polling I.O. Through these techniques, we achieved significant performance increase in current Android I.O. stack. And this improvement is solely from modification of software. Before I conclude my talk, I, I'd like to show you a demo. And today, I brought here two versions of Galaxy S3, and left, green, left blue one is a uh, default version, and light green one is all our optimization techniques apply. Now, let's compare the SQLite performance with benchmark tool called MobiBench. Now this MobiBench is measuring the performance of SQLite insert operation. OK, it's been shit. As you can see from the result, left default version shows only 42 transactions per second for insert operation. On the other hand, optimized version showed 174 transactions per second for insert operation. Okay, thank you for your time and attention, and I'll take any questions. Hi, John Howell, Microsoft Research. I uh, really like how you discovered some insanities in the layering there and cleaned them up. It's a really nice result. Uh, first uh, quick question, and then I'll go back to the back of the line, uh, is in your demos, uh, you, were, you were running on, a, on an emulator. So what was on the bottom of the stack there? I mean, uh, instead of talking to a real flash, you were talking to a disk or? Yeah. Yeah, using. Oh, those were phones. Yeah. This? Oh, I thought yeah. that was. Uh, wow. OK, you had a camera there. Didn't even see yeah. that. Very nice. Thanks. Thank you. So, um, like about 500 million other people, I, I carry a Samsung phone running Android, and the thing I want to know is when do I get this update from Samsung? <laughs> <laughs> is, are there any plans of trying to move this into the production release? Yeah, uh, as, soon as, as soon as possible. <laughs> Hi, my name is Hyuk-Jun Kim. I'm from Sunderland University, and I'm curious about your polling policy because yeah. Uh, first of all, what kinds of I/O you optimize the uh, polling, read or write or both? Yeah, uh, um, it's, it's just it was just for writing a data. Uh, writing. Yeah. Data. So I think I I also looked up the EMC 4.5 device driver and I saw that uh, 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 MMC device driver request handling is done by uh, async, async request handling. So the request is uh, done by pipelining. So I think and uh, the completion of the interrupt is only done when DMA transfer is ended. So uh, I think program time of the end is 
uh, not covered with the completion time. So I think the interruptible way of uh, uh, writing I/O as can be uh, uh, covered with uh, other asynchronous request handling or pipelining or the program time. So why I th I wonder why uh, the interrupt uh, change to polling to in, uh, interrupt to, to polling can be uh, can uh, improve the performance. Yeah, that's a good question. But uh, as I mentioned in presentation, the we measure the context switches overhead and context, number of context switches, and the number was so big than uh, in interrupt mode than and then polling method. So we can. I think that the polling method can reduce the overhead of contact switches. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so I face similar problems when I develop mobile platforms at Yahoo. So getting data from network is faster than uh, writing to databases locally. Um, so I think one question is, while well, you looked at a, a lot of underlying systems like different file systems, different ways of a accessing block device drivers, uh, but have you looked at like using different techniques in databases, like instead of using SQLite, why you may just port my SQL and run it? Because I mean, the war mode it should be default. I mean, it should not be an optimization to use. Yeah, but mm, yeah, another general, uh, instead of uh, SQLite, another general mode can be a uh, 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 big option. And, but uh, I think most of the DBMS, including SQLite, uh, perform their own uh, operation to guarantee the <coughs> reliability of transaction. So every, every DBMS has overhead of journaling operation, I think. So thank you for your good advice. <laughs> You change from the uh, interrupt mode to the poly mode. How does it affect your uh, energy part? Yeah. Uh, actually, of course, the polling method can lead to more power consumption than interrupt. But the, the storage latency of mobile devices is getting smaller. And then uh, I think the, the increase of power consumption can be reduced. So one more question for you. Uh, yeah. So I was surprised when you said that the, the that storage uh, on the mobile device was the bottleneck. I would have guessed uh, you know slow networks and things. So yeah. where where does that come from? Is there a citation I can go to to look that up, or did you guys draw that conclusion on your own? Uh, please repeat your question. Uh, I'm trying to. I, I was surprised that you found that the yeah. sort of overall uh, yeah. Uh, bo yeah. bottleneck yeah. on mobile phones was the storage stack. I was that was not. A, uh, I did not expect that. Uh, where did you get that result? Is that a result you guys come up with, or is there, are there good citations I can find to learn learn this for myself? Where, where, where can I look this up? Where can you? Where, where can I look up this result that uh, that the kind of the dominant bottleneck on performance on mobile devices is storage as opposed to uh, you know crummy 3G networks and so on? Yeah. Uh, so I can uh, I couldn't. Follow your I'll, I'll, gra I'll, gra I'll grab you after. <laughs> <Yeah. Thanks. laughs> Let's discuss in offline. <laughs>